Welcome, welcome, welcome to the Medical School HQ workshop all about how to prepare for conferences. I am Dr. Ryan Gray, one of your host, co-host, moderators for today. Hello, Megan. Welcome to the show, <laughs> if we want to call it that. <laughs> uh, thanks for joining. Uh, Joshua, hello. SCU, Mehan, Chanel, hello, hello. I'm joined by uh, Rachel Grubbs, co-founder at MAPT, uh, MCAT, a pre-med expert for 20 plus years. How are you, Rachel? I am pretty good. I'm excited to be here. Excited for MAPTCON next week. Uh, it is the season for the pre-health, pre-med, med school fair. So it's it's a good time to work on your conferencing skills. Yes, yes. Uh, I am with also Verenia Granum, former pre-health and STEM um, assistant dean of pre-health and STEM advising at Hofstra University. How are you, Verenia? I've only said that, what, 3,429 <laughs> times? That's a mouthful. I understand. <laughs> I'm good, good. Yeah, looking forward to next week. Looking forward to seeing some of our students and all the wonderful presenters and exhibitors we have lined up. And just in general, talking about conferences and why they're important. Yeah. Uh, for the, the the few people here, uh, are any of you coming to MAPTCON next week? That would be my first question. Are you coming to MAPTCON? Uh, I'm trying. Uh, Mahan, uh, or however, however you say that. Tell, Mahin a bit. Uh, Mahin, yeah, there you go. There you go. Thank you, Mahin. Um, uh, let us know what we can do to help, right? If, if there's... Uh, if if a reduction in the ticket price um, would help, let us know. Um, our goal is to get as many people there as possible um, to uh, to help you all. So that'd be great. What, is, what does Yoda say? There is no try, just do. <laughs> we can help you do. Do or do not. There do is no try. There we go. Can I email someone about it? Uh, yeah, email me, ryan at map.com. Easy peasy. <clears throat> I will uh, spell it out here. Uh, Rachel, do we have a deck for today? We do. Uh, well, I'm at the end. Let me do. Uh -huh. Hey, hey, look at that. You guys can see making the most of conferences and fairs. Yep. All right. Okay, we can. So yeah, I mean, Ryan, I think um, part of why we were inspired to do this session is that we, of course, have MapCon next week. And one of the big things that um, when we when we first started announcing MapCon last spring, one of the big things we noticed from students is they would say, I'm so excited to attend a conference. What do I do at a conference? Mm -hmm. And we sort of, I think, forgot one, some of us have been attending conferences for work or for, for professional development you know, some of us here on camera right now for 20 years, right? So mm -hmm. you you sort of forget, like, that's a skill that you did work on over time. And mm -hmm. you've, like, at this point, that skill's in pretty good shape. So you've forgotten you had the work to develop it. The other is a lot of people who are applying to med school this year and the next few years, because of COVID, have maybe really lived a life where they just haven't had any in-person conferences to attend. So, you know, before we kind of jump into the deck, Ryan, I wonder, do you want to just talk a little bit about, you know, MapCon as your brainchild and sort of why you were excited to, I mean, I think MAPCON, but also just conferences in general. What's what's the point? Why should students even go? Yeah, I, I remember the first conferences that I went to, uh, they were podcasting conferences and media conferences, learning how to get into this whole world of content creation. And <clears throat> I remember that the first one I went to, I, I, I'm an introvert. Uh, I would uh, go to a session that I thought was interesting. And then I would run right back upstairs and hide out. And then I would go to another session and run right back upstairs and hide out. And now when I go to conferences, I realize that the power of the conference is actually the people at the conference and not the stuff that you learn, right? The stuff that you learn is great. A lot of times, honestly, you can listen to a podcast and probably learn, right? Watch a YouTube video and learn. The power of a conference, especially... Uh, if if you're there to learn as well, is you can connect with the speakers right after. Right? So they're done talking, they're, they're on a panel, whatever. Uh, a lot of times they'll come to the edge of the stage or come off the stage uh, because there's another session about to start and they'll say, hey, like, fo follow me, I'm going out into the hall. And, and they'll sit there and answer your questions and it's wonderful. 
Um, but a huge part of the the power of conference uh, conferences that I have found over the years is is the the hallway track it's known as is um, just not what's going on in the rooms. Right in MappedCon, we'll have four rooms going plus the ballroom most of the time. <clears throat> um, but what's happening in the hallways? What conversations mm -hmm. are happening in the hallways? What networking? What connections are being made in the hallways? And that's that's the stuff that I love at conferences at this point. So uh, the goal with Maps Gone uh, as the, the brainchild uh, is to kind of take a lot of that energy that I've had from conferences over the years and bring it to the pre-med world. Uh, whenever I go and travel uh, for work, typically when I'm going to conferences, um, typically pre-health conferences, pre-health advisor conferences, I try to do a meetup everywhere I go. Uh, and I, I host a dinner for five to 10 to 15 people at a time. And the power of that connection of that just small group of people is awesome. Uh, and so I wanted to do that on a bigger scale. And that's where MathsCon came from. Awesome. It's the comic con of the pre-med world. The comic con of the pre-med world, yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there I'm will, an introvert. <laughs> there will be no furries or cosplay no, at Maps. No, no, no cosplay. <laughs> um, I'm an introvert myself, and so I kind of struggle. <laughs> Rachel's like, oh my gosh, you went there. <laughs> no, I was just like, I don't know, I might wear a costume anyway. You can't stop me. <laughs> I'll sorry, you to sorry. Do that. Anyway, Green, go ahead. <laughs> I was just about to say, I'm an introvert myself, and so I struggled for a very long time, even with professional conferences to do that, that kind of networking. And, and I, I was the one that like you, Ryan, I would go and just go to the session. And what I found is I just wasn't getting enough out of it. And I realized it's because you're not really doing more. So, and it's intimidating to kind of just talk to people sometimes, but especially now in this post COVID world. So take it at, you know, the pace that you're comfortable with, if you want to come and just Sit in for sessions, that's fine too, but you're going to find just the energy of other people um, doing the same things that you're doing, kind of going through the same thing will motivate you and you're going to want to meet and talk to people. Um, and in this virtual world that we've all been living in, it's kind of nice just to have that opportunity to work on those <laughs> communication skills and interpersonal skills again. Yeah, I guess those are important. Yeah, and I think, um, so I also identify as an introvert, right? So we have three people here who are introverts who are telling you we've put on a, an event where uh, hundreds, if not maybe thousands of people will all be in one space for several days. Why, why are we doing that? Because the value is really is really amazing. And I think that's true, whether it's, you know, a three day in person event, or even if you're just popping into a virtual fair, like any kind of conference or fair is usually worth it. One of my, one of my big tips, like you were saying, uh, both of you were talking about what happens if you just go to a session and go away is can you even if you don't have the emotional whatever to go chit chat and introduce yourself to 20 new people right because I think sometimes people think networking is like this nebulous thing I'm gonna I'm gonna join this this hallway track that Ryan talked about and I'm gonna have a make a couple friends and then I'm gonna spontaneously get invited to a med school by a dean like I mean maybe right but usually it's baby steps, right? So like think to yourself, can I meet one other pre-med who's from my area, right? Can I find one other person who's also thinking about applying to this school that I want to go talk to and just see if I can keep in touch with them over email or Instagram in case we both end up there, right? Like start with small concrete goals. And, um, you know, for me, what I often think about is just like, pre-meds often talk about how they feel isolated right I mean I'm generalizing but a lot of pre-meds express to me like I wish more people in my life got it this is a chance to hang out in a space where everyone gets it um and so to me that's just a huge value it's just like that camaraderie yeah I, I always said because uh, a lot again a lot of the conferences that I've been to outside of work are they're typically podcast conferences so I'm like mm -hmm. this is the place I come where I don't have to worry about people saying what's a podcast <laughs> radio on demand do people still <laughs> listen to the radio <laughs> yeah so you you get to be with other pre-med nerds pre-med yeah. nerds unite that's what we should have called the uh, night we should have <laughs> MathCon subtitle pre-med nerds unite yeah uh all right let's go back to this deck so um, we've got some slides here just kind of about what we think you can get out of conferences. So we're going to, we've already done a little bit of pep talking. 
And then again, we always try to make these sessions and workshops. So we're going to have plenty of time for your questions, um, but also maybe a little bit of like asking about how to navigate, right? We can get into some specifics. So let's kind of go through. So why attend conferences and fairs? Oh, we haven't talked about making impressions on exhibiting schools. Uh, Ryan, you want to talk about exhibitors? Yeah, so we have um, an awesome list of 50 plus exhibitors. I'm typing the link um, in the chat. Uh, check my spelling since I just typed it instead of copy pasted. Um, uh, we have a lot of med schools that are going to be there. And I think at the end of the day, those med schools are there to connect with you. Uh, mm -hmm. They are there to recruit you. They want to meet you. They want to put a face to the name, especially if you are a, a current applicant. And so uh, one of the best things uh, for me, and, and I do this at conferences as well, is I walk the the, the show floor, the exhibit hall floor, and, and just chat with people. What kind of new stuff is going on that with the test prep company? It's like, what, what kind of new things are they working on? Right, Blueprint MCAT just released an, an AI cars tutor. I'm super interested to learn more oh, about that. Oh, me too. Um, and what? so there, there's so much fun stuff going on. Uh, we'll have post back programs and SMP programs and test prep companies and DO schools and MD schools and podiatry schools and I think there's a, a PA school or two, um, other public health and, and the army is going to be there with some SIM dummies and just um, amazing, uh, amazing people who are spending money to be, um, to be with you, to connect with you. And so that's a, a great place to hang out. Yeah. And, and if I can add, um, yeah. if you're currently in your cycle and a school that you've applied to is there, um, uh, this, and Maybe you haven't heard anything. This is not the time to come and say, hey, can you give me an update on, your, on my application? But you can definitely drop your name and say, hey, I applied. I'm very interested in your program. Tell me more. Um, they'll remember that. So come prepared with your um, ID number, for instance, your, applic your application ID number, whatever that is, in case they ask for it. Um, come prepared with a resume. They'll come with the application itself, but but that's an opportunity to to say, hey, I'm I'm really interested in your program. Can you tell me more? Um, if they if they're interested, they'll ask you more questions, and you can then decide from there how much you want to share with them. But but they will remember that. They they will take note of that. Yep. All right. So reason number two to attend a conference: explore a variety of health professions. Uh, so for the folks in the room, how many of you know what your pre-health path is? Like, are you pre-med? I mean, this is mostly going to be a pre-med audience today just because it's an MSHQ event. But how many of you are, are debating, you know, nurse practitioner, physical therapy, podiatry? Pre-med, says Maheen. Pre-med. Looks like pre-med um, dominant crowd today, yeah. I talked to mm -hmm. someone yesterday who wanted to know, I think this was in pre-med office hours, if she should go get a bachelor's in nursing to explore nursing more because mm -hmm. she was debating nursing and physician and being a physician. I was like, you you could, right? Mm -hmm. You could also go shadow some more nurses. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like, mm -hmm. I mean, nursing school is not the same as being a nurse, right? Yep. Um, and, and so to me, I think one of the really exciting things about um, especially for, you know, I know we've got a healthy mix of people who are in their first couple of years of attending, of being pre-med or pre-health versus later in the process is so many of the first years I know that might say they're pre-med or pre-PA or uh, pre-dent. Often, if you dig a little deeper, what they'll tell you is, well, I'm pre-health sciences and I'm still mm -hmm. trying to figure out which one. Yeah. yeah. And so Definitely. that to me is the joy of an event where they're all combined. Absolutely. Yeah, mm -hmm. I think I think it's a, a common I, I would call it a mistake. Students who um have that single track mind on pre-med, on pre-med, on pre-med, on pre-med. And and now that we do a lot of stuff with pre-PA students, now that the, the PA platform is part of mapped and medical school HQ family, mm -hmm. we're finding that uh, and Savannah talks about this all the time, the the founder of the PA platform. Uh, Savannah Perry, the fact that a lot of the pre-PA students that she works with 
they don't find out about PA school until much later in the process. And that's mm -hmm. a shame, right? They could have been preparing uh, for applying to PA school because it's different uh, much earlier. And so how do we expose students to all of the things that are out there that they could potentially be interested in? Right? I'm sure there are a lot of students who potentially give up on a pre-med career becoming a physician, MDDO physician, for one reason or another, but in actuality, they probably would have loved being a podiatrist. Um, mm -hmm. And and podiatry school is oftentimes more accessible for for some students. Um, obviously, PA school, um, but but there are lots of uh, lots of other tracks out there that I don't think people think about. Mm -hmm. And speaking of which, we'll have several podiatry schools uh, at MapsCon <laughs> as well, and, as well as the uh, podiatry association. You can have that TikToker who's a podiatrist. I feel like there's just the one, at least in my opinion. Uh, what's her name? Uh, there are there are multiple. There there is a TikToker who has like a TLC Doctor Pimple Popper type show who is also a podiatrist. Um, I can't think of her name. What's her name? Uh, I'm gonna find. Oh, Dana. It's Dana. foot foot doc Dana. Dana's <laughs> who I'm thinking of. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> yeah. All right. Uh, Why else attend conferences and fairs? You can attend, par participate in interactive workshops designed to build your skill set. Hey, who here knows how to suture? I bet Ryan does. <laughs> did at one point. Oh, right? yeah. It's you've like riding sewn, a bike. You've sewn some human skin, right? I have, yeah. <laughs> I have. It's a good thing to Brady do. is like, oh, wait, that's the same thing as suture. It sounds horrible. Yeah. <laughs> it does. I'm thinking, I'm thinking... Silence of the Lambs, but yeah, I'm just, I, I put a slab a skill. of skin up on my uh, uh, Singer sewing machine. Is that the big company, Singer? Yeah, I think so. <laughs> yeah, that's creepy. <laughs> I'm yeah. ma making a mask uh, for any Walking Dead fans. Uh, I'll be a, a whisperer. Um, that that <sighs> tribe of people wear yeah. uh, wear dead people skin for masks. Awesome. Gross. <laughs> <laughs> Love some Walking Dead, but yeah. Uh, well, we'll have lots of workshops. Brittany, you want to talk about some of the workshops we're doing? Yeah, <laughs> my game's like, see. oh my God. <laughs> we, we've, we've terrified the people in the chat. Thank you for bearing with us, live or, participants. <laughs> or they are extremely excited about it. So, <laughs> yeah, right. so we're having suturing clinics, um, CPR, I believe, basic CPR. Yeah, there'll um, be some sim dummies at the army draft. Yeah, yeah. yeah, exactly. So all um, designed to kind of give you some really and introductions to what you could be potentially doing down the road and walk away with actual skills. And you can say, man, I did this. Now I know what this is like. Mm -hmm. Yep. I yep. will not be suturing. <laughs> Why not? I can, I can sew clothing. I'm good with that. <laughs> I, mean, I don't know if anyone's skin still here. just sewing. clothing for yeah. bones and meat. <laughs> this is a preview to the conference. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> Oh, yeah. I talked about no costumes, but maybe I'll be wearing a person. You never know. <laughs> oh, my gosh. <laughs> this is a preview in terms of uh, how fun we are to hang out. Like, oh, well, absolutely. If, if nothing yeah, else, come hang out at the conference to see how slap happy we get. <laughs> we're a little we're a little wacky. Yeah, it's true. I would actually say that's one of my favorite things about working here is the the kind but irreverent sense of humor that ripples oh, yeah. through our team absolutely it's it's so important to walk that kind but irreverent line right like i don't want you to take things too seriously but also let's not be mean it's such an important thing um all right let me turn the deck back on here uh there you go all right so come learn how to suture come learn how to do cpr we talked we're going to actually have some interactive workshops that are not just about um healthcare, but also about applying there's um there's uh, two different interview workshops. So one is an MMI that required pre-registration. So uh, some of you who are listening may have missed your chance for that, but there's also an interview set. That's on Sunday, that's that's pre-reg only, but there's also an interview workshop on Saturday that's open to all. So lots of chances to practice your interview skills too. Absolutely. I think we've covered you'll meet other students in pre-health. 
You won't be lonely. <laughs> and yeah. you get to attend panel discussions. Yeah. Rachel, talk about panels. Yeah. So to me, one of the great joys of panels is often when we, you know, because of what Mapped and Med School HQ and the pre-PA platform does, we spend a lot of time talking about what it's like to apply, what it's like to get into med school and or to get into PA school. And, and that's great, right? Because this is a key moment in time. It's a hurdle you have to jump. But that's not the goal, right? The goal isn't to be a med student or a PA student or a podiatry student. The goal is to be the healthcare provider, the physician, the PA, the podiatrist. And so to me, what's really exciting about these panels is we've got a lot of people who are out there working in the world who have generously volunteered their time to come talk about life in those jobs. So there's a panel that's, um, you know, women in healthcare. Um, there's a panel that's, um, you know, exploring um, osteopathic manipulation. Uh, or not manipulation, just like the osteopathic school kind of culture. Um, there are lots of different chances to hear different uh, different professionals sort of discuss the tools that they use in their and the the networking they're using in their day to day life. Um, and yeah, and lots of chances for you guys to ask questions. And I think for me, the, the exciting thing about a panel is always uh, more opinions means more perspective, mm -hmm. right? So. Uh, I've talked to pre-meds or pre-health students over the years who have said like, you know, oh, I met this one, one physician and this thing they said really stuck with me and it made me, you know, it doesn't even have to be a bad thing, but it made me nervous or it really resonated or do you think that's true? And it's like, that's one person's opinion. Yeah. You know, go get six or seven people's opinions and then make your own decisions. And to me, that's, that's the joy of a panel. 100%. And sometimes talking to others who, who are currently working in healthcare and successful and hearing their stories helps you get more insight into, hey, I, I can do this too. Right? Maybe they've overcome some hurdles that you can relate to. Um, yep. Maybe they've gone through this process with little kids and you're a working parent right now trying to get into medical school. So. They also had to retake OCHEM and ended up not <laughs> being into the world. Yeah. Right? It Nobody might feel like can get into in med school retaking OCHEM. What are you talking about? Yep, exactly. <laughs> Right, it's just, just like that. understanding these are these are real human beings. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. just like you, just like you and me. All right, all right. So we we wanted to kind of just talk theoretically about why are all the reasons you should attend. But again, I I mentioned at the top when we first started talking about MapCon, one of the biggest questions I kept getting from students is like, I don't know what to do when I get there. How do I know what to ask? I know I'm supposed to visit the schools, but I don't know what to say to them. So let's start getting to some, some specifics here. And again, we're talking about MapCon a lot because MapCon is uh, today's Thursday, September 28th. If you're watching live, it's a week from tomorrow. Um, but these are tools that should help you whether you're doing in-person or um, or virtual uh, conference or fairs, You know, whether it's MapCon or, or someone else's fair. These are uh, the ideas to sort of help you make the most of the time. Um, so let's let's go through some practical tips here. Brittany, you're a planner. They're preparing <laughs> ahead of time. How yeah. should they prepare? Great, great question. So first of all, check out the school ahead of time. See what schools are going to be there. Do some research. Um, see what speakers are going to be there. See if you can find their bio on, online or find their school's profile. And if it's a school that you're interested in, um, or even if it's not, but you're starting to kind of research schools now, this is an opportunity to start that research, start looking into what the school offers. Um, so when you come prepared, you when you come to the conference, you'll be prepared to ask these, these questions about, you know, this exciting program that you ran into and you want more information about or about the location of the school, what's it like? Um, but knowing ahead of time, what who's going to be there and preparing a few questions for each school will help you feel confident when you approach them that you do have something that you want to share and talk about. Mm -hmm. So it's not as awkward. Uh, yeah, sorry. <laughs> and then of course, yeah, decide ahead of time, look at the program. What, what workshops are the ones that I'm most interested in, in going to? Which talks, I mean, I think you should try to go to all of them, but that's pretty hard <laughs> sometimes when they're uh, at the same time. Uh, but based on your own personal interests, right? Look at the program ahead of time, decide, okay, this plan out your day. 
which are the ones that I really want to get to. And of course, yes, leave cushion for opportunities. So in other words, leave some time in there for just social networking and uh, what did you call it? The hallway track yep. where you're kind of in, in, engaged in a conversation with someone and you really, or with a group of people. Uh, and maybe together you go out for coffee or, you know, get something to eat. And now you're talking all the same language, the pre-med, pre-PA, pre-health language, and everyone understands what you're going through. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Love it, love it. Yeah, and this this works, right, not just for MAPSCON, but for the WMC yeah. Fair coming up, the, um, the DO Fair coming up. <laughs> Um, <clears throat> those virtual fairs are typically twice ish a year. Yeah. And so take a look at what schools are going to be there and start doing your research and start figuring out what questions you want to ask. One of the worst things that you can do is waste an opportunity for that connection of uh, a very personal, very targeted question for you uh, and just ask a generic question that is easily mm-hmm. searchable on the school's website. Yeah. yeah. Virtual, virtual conferences are a little more challenging, obviously, because you're not there in person, um, mm-hmm. but you should still come prepared, do the research, right? Come prepared, mm-hmm. um, get involved in the chat. Usually you, there's a session where you can chat directly with admissions folks. That's where you mm-hmm. can really get to get to know them and get to know more about the school. Yeah. Yeah, I think there's a slide and a couple slides about mm-hmm. this, but with prepared questions, I think like that's something that it seems like a lot of students struggle with, right? And what I tend to see is, mm-hmm extremes and and so we've said a million times don't ask a question you can google but i think people are still tempted to right like um i I was at a conference this spring where one of the pre-meds i was with said when in doubt just go walk up and watch um ask their residency matching rate and i was like sure that that's probably fine but but the, the table right across from us literally had their residency matching rate on their easel like as you walk to the table so I was like, yes, and <laughs> yeah. always sort of soak in the environment, <laughs> right? Like, you know, that's not a table where I would ask that question. Right. Yeah. Um, uh, but then I think the flip side is sometimes I have students, uh, I've talked to students who want very specific answers to questions. And I understand where they're coming from. But, you know, someone once said to me, like, Hey, you know, I, I'm I'm trans and I'm really worried about like health and safety and support for LGBT rights on, on campus. So can I go up to a table and ask that that person about that? And I'm like, they may not know all the answers. They may not have all the resources, you know, like they're they're a representative. And for them to say, tell me your concerns and I can look into it and get back to you is one thing. But if you walk in and say, you know, I need to know right now because I, I work in a wheelchair, how many wheelchair ramps you have to the main building, like they you may or may not have that data memorized, right? So I think it's, it's to me, it's like finding that sweet spot of not something you could Google, but not something that makes it feel like you're asking the person to pass a test. <laughs> um, and so Ryan, I think something I've heard you say a lot about preparing questions is opinion-based questions are good mm-hmm. to go. So yeah. maybe give some examples. What does that look like to you? Yeah, so the the one I use all the time, my my current favorite. If you look in my book, uh, the book I have, the pre med playbook guide to the medical school interview, the 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 question that's in there, um, <laughs> I, I actually don't like anymore, but it, it still works. I just don't like it as much. It's like, hey, if your if your daughter were applying to medical school, would you want them to come to the school and why? Mm-hmm. Um, but I think there the the question that I really like now is. What is what is something about the school that you really like that not a lot of people know about? Right. Right. It's opinion based. It's something anyone can answer. And it's not something you can Google. I've had students yeah. ask me during interview prep if if it's okay to ask, you know, what's an area of the school that you think needs to be improved or something along those lines? And that's a tricky question. Right, because you don't want to put that person in an awkward position where they feel like they have to now reveal what they think is the worst part about their school or their program. Yeah. Um, so being careful of things like that, maybe phrasing it differently, maybe you know, thinking of it as, well, what's an area that, that you see students are, are really drawn to or um, that could potentially you know, uh, be developed more or, or can be grown more, right? That's a little bit more positive than asking what do you think is the worst part about your program? Yep. Yeah. 
<laughs> that's the worst part. <laughs> yeah, don't have fun. Uh, <laughs> what do you think needs to be improved? All right, let's move on. All right, so uh, tabling 101. Okay, so I've done my research. I showed up to the event, whether virtual or in person. So I'm either in their little tabling virtual room or I'm standing in front of their table. We've talked about preparing questions. What now? What do I do now that I'm standing there in front of this uh, big bad stranger who may hold the key to my future? May be able to toggle me from secondary receive to interview invite extended. Mm -hmm. right. what, what do I do? What do I say? Hi, my name is. <laughs> I really like the swag you have on your table because I go to conferences for all the little trashies and swag. Uh, and then that breaks the ice, right? That kind of just starts the conversation. Usually they're more than happy to talk to you about their program. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, you want to be respectful of their time, number one. Obviously, mm -hmm. if there are other people there, let them finish. Don't hog the uh, person's time the entire time that you're there. Let other folks ask questions too. Uh, but most, I think, introduce yourself on this slide should probably come first. <laughs> but yeah, that's the main thing, right? Um, be willing to just kind of break the ice, introduce yourself. I'm interested in your school. I'm currently in my cycle. Um, here's some great things I found out. Can you tell me more about this? Can you tell me more about that? That's it. That's it. That's it. That's <laughs> Easy as that. That's it. Easy peasy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, did we answer Mahin's question? Did you see his question oh. or their question about um, uh, at MapsCon? There's a few schools presenting that I have an interview invite to. You mentioned this is a good opportunity for us to interact with those schools. Uh, what kind of questions preparations should I focus on with these programs? So we covered that a little bit, uh, Mahin. I don't know if there's anything more specific that you... Uh, have a, a question about or if, if what we talked about was was okay let us know yeah I mean I think you're probably not Mahin I don't know if this is what you're getting at you're not going to walk up and say hi I'm Mahin and I applied and I heard that if I talk to you maybe you can help my application <laughs> right like <laughs> that's, yep. that's, I mean you probably weren't going to do that but I'm just going to put out there like that is one of the things that's tricky about networking is, and at least for me, right. I'm, I tend to be a very, um, I, I like, I like to understand consequences of actions. And I was like, for a long time, when I was younger, I thought networking had to result in something right away. And therefore it felt disingenuous to me. I was like, like, they're not going to think I want to get to know them. They're going to think I want something from them. And I don't, I don't want that vibe. And at some point in my 30s, I was like, oh, networking is being a decent human being and staying in touch. Mm -hmm. Like, there's no magic to it. Like, and part of what I need to do is honestly just get older. <laughs> I'm like, because um, the longer you've been on this earth, the more people you know, generally. It's not always the case. Um, uh, but so I think what you want to kind of think about is like, you, you've got a chance to talk to this person that you, you've applied to their school. Let them know. Hey, I'm Mahin. I'm, I'm I'm just want to let you know I'm applying to the current cycle. I love your school. I'm so excited. You know, sort of treat it like you would treat any, but just give them the insight that hey, you're in the middle and and see where it goes. Like the whole point is you're trying to give them a chance to get to know you. See where it goes. I like that. Mahin says, uh, you covered things quite a bit. I'm just a bit overwhelmed about contacting schools and showing my interest without being overbearing. Yeah. So contacting schools is is the interesting part, right? I, I think a conference gives you a unique a, a unique ability to uh to contact a school because they are there consensually saying, right, contact us. Mm -hmm. Whereas the typical applicant most schools don't want to hear from you. You apply. That is your contact. And for a lot of schools, that's the only time they want to hear from you, unless obviously they invite you for an interview. So I think that's that's the benefit of going to a conference is them saying, hey, we're here, right? Uh, give it to us uh, for the most part. Like, come ask us questions. Let us know you're interested. All this stuff. Let us know you've applied. 
Um, and yes, don't don't be overbearing in that moment, right? Don't take up someone's time and uh, kind of, um, uh, what do you call that? Monopolize their time yeah. uh, because there are typically other students there that also have questions. So you have to mm -hmm. be respectful of everyone's time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and if you're interviewing at some of these schools, which I think Mahi mentioned um, is what's happening, uh, you can say that. Hey, I'm I'm so excited. I got a, I, I have an interview coming up. I just wanted to say hello. Maybe I'll see you the day of my interview. Or I, you know, yeah. whatever that might be. Yeah. Um, and that's it. You might not need to go beyond that, right? You don't want to be pushy and, and kind of try to see if you can get more information about the interview because that's inappropriate. Right. But but just note, just uh, making that contact and letting them know that you're excited to be there and looking forward to your interview is something that they might potentially remember. Mm -hmm. Agreed. I don't know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think one of the things that sometimes people forget with these interactions is that we get like, I hope they'll let me in. They're the deciders, right? So we get this sort of like fear and sort of pedestal attitude with like, oh, these admissions mm -hmm. officers, like, but they're just human beings and they're there to work. And most of the time when they're on campus, they don't have the bandwidth to take visitors, right? Like med schools aren't set up for like campus tours and orientation. And like, they don't have the same kind of recruiting um, infrastructure that a lot of colleges have, right? So this is the day they showed up to work that they said today, instead of having to, you know, read 50 personal statements or go through whatever bureaucratic I have to go through to get to make sure I'm in great shape for like whatever legal stuff for cycles two years from now, because that's how legal paperwork works. Today is the day I get to meet potential students, right? So like, it makes it easier because they want you. That's the day they want to meet. Uh, Amaryllis, am I saying that right? Am Amaryllis? Amaryllis. Okay. okay. <laughs> My brain is doing um, uh, that musical. It's an Iowa. The marching band. Never mind. Marching band. <laughs> I'm terrible with. Okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm having old person brain, and I'm not that old, but I'm definitely having a rough oh, cog cognition day. Anyway, our friend Amaryllis <laughs> says, "I'm actually planning on participating in the 2024 application cycle to start med school in 25. Would this MatCon be the one that I should make, or would there be another one next year?" Uh, hmm. <laughs> so two separate questions. One is you don't only need to attend a conference the year you're applying. I think one of the big benefits of, of attending the year you apply to your to your point is this chance to meet people who are actually handling your current application potentially. But the flip side is so much of being a successful pre-med, pre-health student is navigating all of those years leading up. So if you have you know the bandwidth and the interest to come this year, it's just going to make you all the more prepared next year when you apply. Um, the flip side of it is we do not, I just want to be very honest, MapCon may or may not happen again next year. We want to see how this one goes before we decide, is the next one also live? Is it virtual? Is it every year? Is it every other year? Those are all question marks. <laughs> um, so I'm not saying you have to come this year. I'm just saying don't not come this year because you're 100% sure you want to come next year. Like think about each year as its own opportunity. <laughs> Uh, there's, a question. there's a question about whether or not there will be student panelists that we can speak with. Uh, Friday night, you're doing a non-trad night, Ryan. Yeah, so Friday night is is a lot of non-traditional um, panelists and speakers. Uh, but yes, there will also be student panelists. Mm -hmm. um, there will be PA, is there a PA student? I forget, PA students, yeah. um, MD, PhD students, um, so yes, there there will be students there as well, medical students. Okay. Yeah, and just switching screen share to the actual. So if you if you guys go to mapcon.com, I'm in exhibitors right now. Um, and yeah, we're happy to answer questions, but just so you can see all this yourself if you come to schedule. Uh, you can see, got our PA admissions panel. Uh, Pursuing medicine is a non-traditional pre-med. That's a panel with a bunch of our friends who are either in med school or practicing medicine who took different non-traditional paths. Um, lots of cool panel opportunities here. All right.
keep turning off screen share when what I need to do is just split back to the other page. Uh, well, I'm sorting out my tech. Are there other questions in the chat, Bernie? Okay. I think we got to them. Okay. Anyway, I had to just step away for a second. ERB. Sometimes it happens. This looks amazing. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, thanks for being here. Uh, that's not the one I wanted. I'm seeing some real screen share issues. Okay, let me just not talk for a second and focus up. <laughs> Do you want me to? I don't know what happened. I just like I lost the whole deck, but it's there. It's on Google Drive. I'll get it back. <laughs> Everything I had set up went away, so I just got to start again. <clears throat> all right so we talked about this a little bit already but again tabling 101 do not ask something you can google um by the same term that doesn't necessarily mean don't ask basic info it also means beware of info searching i think these these tabling opportunities are more of a chance for like humanity and connections so again like ryan suggested subjective questions opinion-based questions What's something that you love about your school? What's something you wish more people knew about your school? It doesn't have to be the school. It could be. But also, you know, if you're talking to someone from a med school that's, I don't know, in a small town or a small city in Montana that you've never been to, that might be it. It's like, what, what do you really love about? I mean, I hear Missoula, Montana is a really happening place. Thanks, Hank Green. <laughs> right? you know, like, maybe you didn't know how awesome Missoula was. Maybe this this person across the table from you can tell you what it is they love. Mm -hmm. um, Good point. What to bring? This feels like a Verenia slide if there ever was one. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> yes. So what to bring? Obviously your energy, your enthusiasm, um, your willingness to just um, engage with others that are also on the same path. But more practical things like a notebook and pen, obviously. I mean, I don't even know. Do, do folks still write on paper? A lot of times I see students on their phones just writing notes. But whatever you need to be able to keep track of names, contact information for people that you're meeting, uh, bring something to write with. Mm -hmm. um, your business card, if you have one. If you don't have one, um, you can pretty easily print out a few. Just, you know, there's templates online that you can get for free and just get some card stuff um and print them out and just kind of cut them neatly and professionally uh and on that business card you would write your name your email your contact information uh potentially your um like i said before your application id so your double amc id your mps id sorry or your acomas id or your texas applicant id whatever id um i don't think we have any texas schools actually but whatever information that's related to you that, that they can potentially look up if they're curious mm -hmm about you as a candidate, provide that on your business card. You want to dress comfortably but professionally. So business casual or, um, you know, suit. Uh, if you're, if you have one or a nice shirt and tie for gentlemen and, and pants and, and for ladies um, or whatever you're comfortable with wearing, I shouldn't say that actually. Anyone can wear a suit and tie these days. Um, <laughs> Any, anyone can wear a dress these days. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, so whatever you're comfortable in um, that's appropriate for a conference, right? So not necessarily, you know, your most favorite pair of jeans or sweatpants, uh, but if you have a professional pair of professional looking dark jeans, that's fine too, mm -hmm. um, with a nice top and shirt and tie. And yeah, just, I, I think Ryan's still off camera, but Ryan really loves to rock the like very yep. upscale jeans and a sport coat. And a, right? and a like jacket. at one yep. point I was like, those aren't jeans, those are denim trousers. But apparently yeah. that's not not a distinction <laughs> all people make. But yeah. like, usually they're jeans. <laughs> usually they're like a darker color too. So it, yeah, it just looks a little bit better. more professional. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, yeah, comfortable shoes. Why does that matter? Oh, because you're gonna be doing a lot of walking. If you're going to get anything out of this conference, it's going to be that mileage and the, the step count on your phone, right? You want to walk and, and talk and meet people. 
you're going to be going back and forth between sessions, mm -hmm. after sessions. Uh, so you just want to be in some comfortable shoes mm -hmm. that can get you around. And then, of course, a bag, something to hold all your materials in. Uh, mm -hmm. Sometimes uh, exhibitors come with the swag I was talking about before, and they might provide some. But just in case, mm -hmm. have your backpack with you, um, something, a bag or something, maybe not like a shopping plastic bag, maybe something a little bit nicer. Mm -hmm. uh, but just something to hold your materials. Awesome. Yes, love all that. Yeah. So there's a question in the chat. Someone that joined a little late. Yes, there will be. This will be available by uh, replay. Right. We're sending that out. Yeah, we'll send the recording out. Um, if applying in the next few days, is it okay to ask them if it is way too late? MD only. Hmm. <laughs> they'll they'll probably give the general well our <laughs> deadline hasn't passed yet yeah. uh but as of right at mapcon it's october 6th through 8th it's super late um yeah particularly for MD. yeah mm -hmm. it's always possible but probably not probable yeah yeah i was just thinking that uh with this question is like they said is it okay to ask them I mean, in theory, you can ask them anything you want as long as it's professional and polite. But what you do want to keep in mind, yeah, is that their job is to get as many great applicants as possible so that they can make the 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 best possible cohort, right? So when in doubt, they're going to want you to apply so they can take a deeper look at your application and see if you're a fit, right? And and so it's not that they're doing anything untoward, but that's what they're that's their incentive is I need to fill this med school class with amazing people. So they're going to want people to apply, even if it's late, even if it's a long shot, because it helps them to have those choices. Right. Um, where what you want to think about is like, like Ryan was saying, we know it's late. These are most med schools do do rolling uh, admissions. Almost all do at least rolling applications. So interviews are being offered. The later you apply, the fewer interview seats are out there. So just kind of need to think about what is it you're asking them versus what is it you just need to ask yourself. Um, what's not on this what to bring list? I mean, maybe not all of you have the same kind of weird health issues that I have. But one thing I've learned about coming to conferences is I feel a lot better if I pack a mini pharmacopoeia. So <laughs> those of you that have either had health issues or maybe have had people in your life who depended on you, sometimes that's little ones, sometimes that's your grandparents. But like, it, you know, like I think about my mother who we used to refer to as the professional grandmother. Kids who weren't her grandkids would come up to her and be like, Miss K, I heard you probably have ibuprofen because she always does. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and so this is something that, you know, Apple doesn't fall far from the tree, right? I've learned this behavior from my mother. But I find at conferences, even if something's just upstairs in my hotel room, sometimes the momentum of the event, I'm still socializing with someone, I'm having a chit chat, I don't want to spend six minutes going up to my hotel room. And I mean, you're loud, right? But like, think about what are the things you don't want to like weigh down your backpack and be so heavy, you have a million, a million things you don't need. But do you need to pack, you know, a granola bar, a bottle of water? Mm -hmm. um some Benadryl in case someone wears perfume that triggers your allergies uh, <laughs> you know like think think about what you'd like to have there so that you can address any physical needs because this is a lot of learning and interacting like I find a lot of people leave conferences sort of both uplifted and drained right like you're gonna have so much fun and learn so much and be really tired so like mm -hmm. in your what to bring list I love everything that you went through Brittany I mean like, you did the deck as written but yeah, I was just like, what do you, what do you need for a little, little health? Yeah, good point. Bring uh, what's uh, what's that uh, that that like super high dose vitamin C stuff called? Um, oh, like the energy, inner C, inner. Yeah, oh, the powder, yeah, the emergency. Emergency, emergency that's what emergency, it's called. <laughs> I love that. Yeah, yeah. Seriously, by the end of the conference, you, you're gonna feel like I need a boost. <laughs> yeah. uh yeah potentially potentially they they see you as a conference attendee someone who is uh, enthusiastic all of that stuff it could help better than not uh 
Um, and then, so again, a lot of the impetus for doing this session today is because MapCon is next week. Um, so we do still have spaces available. Um, the um, the hotel itself, our room booking has been completely booked up, but there are, I think, still some hotels in the city if you're out of town. Um, or, you know, if you're anywhere in the Northeast Corridor, anywhere really from Richmond to Boston, you can hop on a train and go there for a day trip. Um, the uh, This conference uh, is at the Hilton uh, Inner Harbor, Baltimore. So it's right by Camden Yards where the Orioles play. That's not actually the main train station in Baltimore, but it's one that has plenty of stops. So, um, you know, I know this is America. We love our cars. If you want to drive there and pay $30 a day for parking, you go right ahead. <laughs> I'm just, <laughs> I'm going to remind people, easy to come visit this conference on the train. Naheen says, do you have any affiliated hotels with discounts? Yeah, we had a really big room block and a deep, deep discount on our rooms, but the the block, the pre-reservation for the block ended a week ago today, Naheen. Um, so at this point, we don't have any additional affiliated hotels with discounts. Um, um, so uh, just the, at, at this point in the season, I think honestly, just lots of what's going on with baseball, like you're just going to need to do a little bit of Mm -hmm. of your yeah. own hotel research <laughs> unfortunately the orioles are in first place they have uh, still a two and a half game lead if they keep that lead uh after sunday which is the last day of the regular season they will be playing at home when we will be right next door and and you will be able to see the stadium from yeah. where all the exhibitor okay. tables are uh and we'll be able to maybe even watch watch some baseball from the, yeah. the windows That's pretty cool. exciting <laughs> Yeah, so which day would be best to come? Probably Saturday. Saturday is the, mm -hmm. the fullest day. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I don't know if anyone here has uh, siblings that might be in high school or no friends, siblings or friends who are thinking through that. We have some programming for high school students as well. So spread the word. Early, early pre-meds. Any other questions about conferences in general? Okay. <clears throat> Maheen says, I'm a non-trad old pre-med Friday night. Yep. Uh, what will that entail? Yeah, so we have uh, Antonio Patterson confirmed with me today. He will be able to be there. Okay. He is a second year student um, at NYITCOM in Arkansas. He is 51. Nice. 50. That's so cool. um, we have Jen, um, Ryan, Ryan something, uh, um, who is 52 uh she is starting out her third year of medical school um we have tony Schweitzer, who is now a attending uh and it's funny i just i, I found a let's see if i can pull it up right now i i found a comment that he left me somewhere i don't know if it was an email or or what it was um it's an old thing that he sent me uh, when he first got into school, yeah, I don't see it here. Um, uh, Tony is again super non traditional. He uh, is is currently an attending. He just graduated uh, from residency. He's a hospitalist. He's taking the time to come out to speak. Yep. Um, so that it's it's a great a great night. Uh, panelists just hearing their stories, understanding the possibilities, understanding the. The trials and tribulations. I think in, excuse me, Antonio was a a pre med for like eleven years or something, and he mm -hmm. just he never gave up. He just had the other things come up, and always knowing he wanted to to get to medical school eventually, and now he's he's there and doing it. Awesome. Yeah, Kylie is going to be there for any night. Kylie Shibak, is that right? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I always really love Kylie's story. I mean, I'll let her tell it herself for those of you that get to meet her in person, but. Um, she she had some health issues that resulted in bad grades and had an advisor just say, you just need to give up on your career choice. And I think if that had happened to me when I was 19 or 20, it might have shattered me. And so I just have such admiration for Kylie, who was like, 
oh, you don't get that seriously sick for the last two years is not the same as not able to do hard work when I'm well. And, yeah. you know, she walked out of that advisor's office and never went back. And now she's in med school. <laughs> yeah. You know, she did not let one person's opinion. And I don't even think that person was trying to be a downer, right? They probably just didn't have mm-hmm. enough data and went ahead and made a conclusion. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so love Kylie. Here's Tony. Look at this. When Tony got in. <laughs> yeah. So this is March 2015. He wrote this email to me. It's awesome. So eight eight years later. Four years of med school, uh, three years of residency, and now uh, he's in attending. Yeah. So you two who are watching this, maybe you'll be back at MapCon in eight years to share your <laughs> journey. Yeah. All right. Any final questions today? How long is too long to talk uh, to mm. Adcom reps? That's a good question. So, yeah. I mean, if you Play have questions, <laughs> right. If you have questions, then feel free. Um, obviously, if other people are kind of waiting, milling around, wanting to also ask questions, then mm-hmm. politely give them a chance to as well. Mm-hmm. Um, but, but as Ryan said, play by ear. Uh, you might get into a really engaging conversation with someone. It's going to take 10 minutes, 15 minutes, whatever that is. Mm-hmm. Um, but you'll kind of pick up on some cues when you sort of, you know, you're, the person you're speaking to starts to kind of maybe back away a little bit or maybe they're busy doing other things. So be That's respectful I, I, of their time. Go ahead. Uh, yeah, no, I love what you're saying is you'll pick up on their cues. I, I hope so, right? I and and so again, I mean, nothing against this person. It's like, Everybody here is probably at least 17, if not 20 or 21, right? You've been interacting with other humans for a long time. So my question for you is, if you were just talking to the barista at Starbucks, right? So they're paid to be nice to you, right? So you know that they're not really your real life friend. This is just a cordial exchange to make everyone's day go better because it's nice to be nice. Would you ask yourself how long you could talk to them, right? Some days it might be 15 seconds. Some days, if it's really dead and you're having a really great chat, it might be five or six minutes. But it's like at some point, like you move on. And, and, and so I think it's the same kind of thing. It's it's watch the face, watch the body language. Um, if you are spieling nonstop, then the conversation's gone too long. Mm. Right? There should be some exchange. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love Amaryllis' message. Yeah. Oh, good. Amar- uh, Amaryllis says, uh, LOL, the current Starbucks priest, I approve this message, <laughs> right? I'm, yeah. I mean, I think any of us who've worked in retail or food understand that, you know, most customers are fine. Some are nightmares. And some think that because you're paid to be nice to them, that you're their mm-hmm. new best friend. <laughs> Would it be weird to visit a table more than once? There's a pattern here of questions that makes me wonder, what's what's going on? What are you really trying to get at? Well, so so I, I will make an assumption, right? No judgment. I don't know this person. My assumption is that this person potentially thinks they have some social awkwardness and they just mm-hmm. want to make sure they don't cross a line. And I think there's no way that we can tell you what that line is you just have yeah. to get out there and practice that that's all this is yeah mm-hmm. thank you ryan that's a very smart and productive way to think about those questions yeah yep. we it's all practice. we all were socially awkward at some point and you just practice today and- right now yeah. um, <laughs> it's, it's an ongoing practice yep yeah that's it All right. Popcorn, popcorn. Popcorns have stopped popping the kernels. Yeah. Um, Thanks, everyone, for coming, hanging out. Uh, yeah. Again, hopefully we will see you all at MappedCon next week. Again, uh, if you can, uh, if you can make it, 
would love to have you if the ticket price is something right now it's uh, you can get the tickets for fifty dollars if that's something that's still a barrier for you shoot me an email ryan at mapped.com i will hook you up uh, right. with something even better than that so yep mappedcon.com What's use the code i'll be there for 50 percent off your ticket oh, i don't know if my screen share is showing or not yeah. <laughs> There we go. All right, friends. All right. Take care, everyone. Thanks for coming. We'll see you hopefully next week in Baltimore. <laughs>